guys, welcome back to Making Moves. I'm here today with my friend, fellow creator and iconic photographer, Nazrin Danan. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Nazrin, I'm so excited that you're here because I've been wanting to hang out with you. So I just like bullied you into coming on my podcast. So I, you can it hang wasn't out. even bullying. You said, do you want to come? And I said, yes. Um, no, I'm really excited too because I feel like I see you all the time. I everywhere, know. But like we don't actually know each other that well. Yeah. So this is fun. I know. We do have to hang out. That's the crazy thing about LA is like, it's like once you hear of the car, you like see it everywhere. Yeah. Or like once you hear the person, I yeah. feel like I see it, see you everywhere. It's actually, ins- I have so many of those friends too. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we're close, but then I'm like, no, we're not. Oh, we like, just I see each other every weekend. You. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. So that being said, tell us a little bit about yourself. If someone like doesn't know who you are, give us like the four one one little elevator pitch. I know you're from Portland. Give us your age. Give us, you know. Yeah. The, so the being fun facts. being from Portland is like fully a personality trait for me at this point. <laughs> um, I'm actually not from Portland. Uh, Amine called me out on that a couple couple weeks ago. I saw him. And he was like, "What high school did you go to?" And I was like, "Okay, so I'm actually from Corvallis, which is like a <laughs> suburb." And, like, and he was like, "I knew it. Like, I never saw you growing up." And I was like, "Yeah." So this is embarrassing. That's fine. Um, I'm from Corvallis, Oregon. I grew up there and then I went to college in Portland I went to Portland State University um, but I lived there for like seven years because I stayed there for a little bit after graduating and yeah I'm a professional photographer um, I do a lot of like entertainment stuff I tour with musicians I do a lot of like celebrity photography mm-hmm. and I also do a lot of like brand campaigns and model tests and like random things like I shoot for a lot of influencers and stuff mm-hmm. now so yeah I just, you know, I kind of dabble. I do a yeah. lot. And yeah. you live in L.A. now. I do live in L.A. now since the pandemic mm-hmm. because I used to be flown back and forth all the time by clients, which was so fun. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, during the pandemic, I couldn't be, like, flying around willy-nilly. And oh. I was still getting a lot of job offers down here. And I was not working at all in Portland. So once my lease was up, I was just like, eh, I have to get a place. But, like, all my work was here. All my friends were here. So it wasn't a huge mm-hmm. change, but I do miss it. It was yeah, a nice I was gonna home say, base. What do you miss the most about Portland slash would you ever move back? Um, I had really good friends there. And I think I really liked having, like, <laughs> this sounds stupid, like, normal friends. Like, people who work, like, regular jobs or, like, micro-influencers or, like, just, like, normal no, people. literally, Because I feel like in L.A., nobody's normal. They romanticize <laughs> the little things. Yes. And it's, like, yes. it's very awesome. Yeah. And, like... I don't want to sound, I feel like I sound so out of touch being like, no, it's so heartwarming. <laughs> like, no, it's actually not like, <laughs> it you was, know what I mean? Yeah, well, it was. It's cool. embarrassing that yes. I'm saying that, but like dead ass, like but when I'm with my friends, it I makes get me feel it so though. good. Yeah. I get it because like I would go on tour for like three months with like some famous artist and then I would come home and like have like regular friends and we'd like go out to dinners and like do all these cute little Portland things and like mm-hmm. have picnics and go like take pictures and just like, I don't know. I felt like it was a very like grounding space, whereas in LA, like, you never get a break from just like working Absolutely. and going to events and just all these like influencer things. Like nothing is real here. If you've never been to LA, it's fake. It's like nothing's uh-huh. real. <laughs> it's awesome, but it's fake. Yeah. yeah. It just like nothing makes sense. Like if when I take a step back, when I like go home for the holidays or something, I'm like, girl, what the hell was that? Yes. <laughs> it's like, have you seen those TikToks where it's like, will this matter in five years? And then it like zooms out yeah. and it's like the globe. Yeah. And then like the world and then like the galaxies. And like that's sometimes I need to do that yeah. living here because for sure. you get caught up in it. But yeah, so that's probably what I miss the most. The food scene there is amazing too. Mm-hmm. Just like the nature. Mm-hmm. Also, quality of life is just everything so much cheaper. There's no sales tax. Yeah. Everyone's so nice. Like I there it's just a different vibe, you mm-hmm. know? But I don't I'm not one of those people that like hates LA. Mm-hmm. I'm just like I can, you know, I think kind of see it for what it is. Being that person that is kind of in the middle of those types of groups, like the crazy celebrity lifestyle and then having normal quote unquote friends Mm -hmm. what would you say are like the cool things or lessons you've taken from both types of people someone was talking to me about this the other day and they were like you just like meld so well into like all different types of groups like I have so many friend groups in LA and I just I you're can, a little floater and yeah, I love it I'm a floater I too I can float between That's why any of them everywhere. yes exactly <laughs> um and I I think something that a lot of people struggle with when they're trying to get into like music photography or like celebrity stuff is they like think that the, like celebrities are like like a higher caliber of On a, a person pedestal. yeah and I'm just like these are people mm-hmm. like they're really cool and they're very talented and like I love working with people like that but at the end of the day I'm like I treat them like I treat my friends and I think Mm -hmm. that gets you really far just Mm -hmm. like being yourself um, in an industry like this got it yeah what would you say about your normal people friends that you like cherish or you admire about them 
um, they're just like fun and silly mm-hmm. and we like always have a good time and it doesn't have to be like about anything crazy. We don't have to spend like a shit ton of money. We don't have to like, you know, it's just mm-hmm. fun. It's just like, I don't know. I feel like I can just be like very carefree, very myself, whereas sometimes like on jobs and stuff, I'm like, I have to be on and I have to be like in like networking mode and like yeah. all, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's just nice to like turn that off sometimes. But I also feel really lucky to have those types of friends in LA too. I feel like I have great friends here and yeah, that like makes all the difference. Like mm-hmm. people who come to LA and they're like, it's so fake. Like everyone's fake and like wants something from me. I'm like, no, they don't. Like yeah. you're just hanging out with the wrong people. Uh-huh. So yeah. I feel like it's really important to stay true like to yourself in both of those settings of because course. it's like. And I think, yeah, I, I would say that's probably the biggest like lesson I've mm-hmm. learned is just to like, if I don't, like someone I'm just I'm not gonna force it I'm mm-hmm. like maybe this isn't for me it's just not working so yeah. yeah okay well not to be that girl but I'm like can you name drop some of the clients <laughs> you've had because I mean Nezrin <laughs> you literally she's being so humble right now you've shot what it seems like everyone it kind of it it's kind like of you're is. A, ph- a photographer's dream like you know what I mean like Thank that's you. what that's what people want that's is like, like the really nice list you have that's really nice so I'm like please name drop like literally after I was like famous celebrities um <laughs> I mean I feel like I used to get the question all the time this like who's your like dream person to shoot with mm-hmm. and I would always be like Drake and then after I took photos of Drake I was like well what are we gonna do now <laughs> um well that's iconic can you tell me a little bit about that uh yeah it was actually when I was in college it was like my first year in college and I was friends with this music producer and one of his friends was Drake's manager Mm -hmm. and they were coming through Portland and he was like oh do you want to go to the show tonight and I was like um yeah so he like sent me tickets and he was like did you want a photo pass and I was like shut up yeah I was literally a freshman in college I was like sitting in my freshman dorm like texting that's crazy yeah and I was like um yeah like if you could get me a photo pass like that'd be cool and he did. I went. I picked it up. It was in like an OVO envelope and it just said Danan on it and it had like the owl like embossed Please on the envelope. Please tell me you still have it. Oh, yeah. yeah you're absolutely. Like in a frame. Absolutely. I kept that. <laughs> um, I have a little scrapbook of like all my like little, I don't know, like paper. Like you. I'm a sentimental bitch. No, and so I, I keep too. all those things. <laughs> but I have like scrapbooks from like different like years of my life and stuff and I definitely have that envelope. But yeah, that was really cool. And I took photos of him and like at that show, I met a bunch of people one of whom like ended up being Party Next Door, who I got to shoot for Sick. a couple years later when he was like getting really big. But yeah, I feel like a lot of my career is definitely word of mouth, which like is is really interesting and it's led to a lot of things. I'm like, I'm trying to think of who to even name drop. I don't know. I mean, uh, recently I shot Kanye for the for his Netflix documentary premiere. Which is <laughs> that was insane. insane. That was like deranged. I How actually did you get that. So one of my friends... Like, um, I'm literally nervous talking to you about it. I can't even I imagine being on set with him. Um, like, like, I, I mean, he's not even close to me. I know. it's It was really crazy. One of my friends, Greg, he is an amazing photographer. I talk about him in, like, every interview I've ever done because I just think he's phenomenal. Who Greg, is this Greg? Greg Noir. Greg. Okay. Um, he's from Houston, Texas. Wait, shut the heck... Like, that's his last name? Yeah. No. Well, no, that's, like, his stage oh, okay. name. Oh, okay. I he, was like, like good God. But he was born to do this. He, yeah, I know. I... <laughs> I actually recently found out that wasn't his real last name and I felt like really cheated. Um, But I talk about him in like every interview I do because he's also just such an inspiring photographer to me. But he's one of the people who like has passed me a lot of really cool opportunities. He had like gotten me my gig when I worked with YouTube and stuff. And yeah. It's like a mentor figure type? Yeah, I would say. I love people Um, like that. And he was shooting for Netflix and he just needed like a second shooter. And so he hired me and he hired my friend to like edit all the photos and stuff. So we were all like at this event together. And I think I think we didn't know if Kanye was actually coming because it was just kind of like a VIP like event night for, um, you know, for guests. his for his documentary. Yeah, for the documentary. Okay. But he came and we all got to take photos of him and he was Shut up. super nice. Shut but he was like just engaging with everybody. He was like talking to everyone, being super nice. Yeah. Were you shocked by his ability to be so personal or did he still have that like I'm a star energy? Um. I th- I think every like celebrity, especially with that like level of like kind of charisma yeah. that everyone's just like weirdly obsessed with them for uh-huh. some reason, has that. But it's super normal, really nice, really friendly. The problem is no one around them acts normal. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So that's what makes the other people, celebrity weird. Yeah, other people's behavior yeah. is kind of what you're like. Oh wait, 
You're should like, I be acting different? Yeah, 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 yeah. You question like, wait, should I be like bowing down right now? Yeah. You know? But that was a really cool job. And well, then. Yeah, no kidding. That's crazy, Nazarin. Yeah. That honestly, that was like that was like a career like bucket list moment. I was like, I, you work so hard to get in rooms like that, and especially as like a black woman, it's just like exciting when I something like that happens. Right yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I love my friend Greg. He always mm-hmm. hooks me up with like really cool jobs and Shout stuff. Out Greg, Shout so out cool. Greg. I want to talk a little bit more about your relationship with Greg because, I mean, he reminds me of like what Alicia's done for me. Like yeah. she like really put me on, you know. Yeah, and like she doesn't have to. And didn't have to. Yeah. And I, I'm so big on like mentors and like giving back. So I guess what have you like learned from him? Are you trying to give back to people now? Because you have like quite the plethora of clients and yeah. gigs and whatever. And I guess what's your like, what are your thoughts on you know having mentors or helping others out in um, the industry? Because I feel like it's really competitive. I I think it kind of is. I was talking to another photographer about this the other day though. We like did a job together and I'd met her like one time Mm -hmm. and she ended up like driving me home because she was like oh my god like you're on my way home like Mm -hmm. I'll just take I was like thank you so much that's so nice um but we were kind of talking about how like not all photographers are like overly friendly or like make a lot of friends but Mm -hmm. like both her and I have so many photographer friends and like I don't know I think it's competitive but it's also not there's so much work to go around Mm -hmm. and I think some people see it as like a competition of like who can get the best jobs and who can like bag this client Mm -hmm. and who can make the most money but everyone else it's we're all just here doing the same thing and it's like why would you not support like other female photographers or other photographers that you really believe in and your peers yes yeah um and I was telling her about like there's this group chat that I'm in that one of my friends Ashley Osborne made that's like all the female music photographers in LA. Stop. Yeah. Oh my God, why do I have chills? I am know. I okay? I'm like, am I about to start period? <laughs> You're like really emotional. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> but it's, it's a really cool chat and I had like added um, this girl to it because I was like, we all like throw gigs in there. Like if I'm booked for something and I yeah. get another offer, I'll just be like, oh, I'll pass it along to one of these girls in the group chat. Totally. A, like I know that their work is good and they're like mm-hmm. vetted and stuff and it's like B, why would I just not like Give, help someone out yeah like, give the homie a bag you mm-hmm. know what I mean um <laughs> give the homie a bag you know and but I really appreciate like photographers who've done that for me Greg's done that for me a million times like he's gotten me such cool clients mm-hmm. and he's always just like very supportive and I feel like I don't get that a lot especially from male photographers totally well I was gonna say why do you think he's so supportive of you I, honestly like we just ha- like hang out we vibe mm-hmm. he's really nice really friendly and he like likes my work which I really appreciate because I think he's like best photographer ever um, but it's it's just like nice to like feel supported and stuff mm-hmm. because you don't get that from every angle and mm-hmm. so when you meet other people in your field like that it's like okay like you're a cool person you're a good person mm-hmm. <laughs> no totally I, I feel like in any industry it's crazy how hard it is to find like good like who people who have your best interests yes and i feel like having those people too has made me one of those people yeah because i'm like i don't feel so competitive and i don't feel like like bullied and like put up against Uh because i know i have people who support me so Mm -hmm. i try to i try to do that too Yeah. yeah i i will say same with me like it feels feels good to like almost give back in a way being like no you know what like I don't want anything. Please, like meet this person I know. Like, yeah, I would love to. I'm also a huge connector. I love introducing my friends Me to like too. my I other friends it. and stuff. And that's just something I've always like had fun doing because I like when all my friends are friends. And yeah, it just feels good. Mm-hmm. So I've always admired that so much about you. Like I feel like I see you everywhere. <laughs> at the same things, and you always you're you're working the room. You know everyone, even if it's not like your best friend you're still people are so comfortable around you yeah. and i wanted to ask like how are you so good at that because it's really a gift it's honestly really a learned skill um i feel like i'm actually kind of an introvert like i love being at home and just like sitting by myself and like doing nothing but mm-hmm. i've gotten really good at like being able to like turn it on especially for like events and like um when i was working with youtube and i was like covering all of those events it's like VidCon, I'm sorry, that is the craziest place I've ever been in my it's life. Insane. It's insane. And having to like turn on my like extrovert energy for like three days because when you're an event photographer, most of it is like 
going up to people, like random strangers you've literally never met, and you're like, hi, can I get a photo of you guys? Like, da, da, da. And I have to tell them how to pose, and I have to tell them to put their arms around each other, but you just have to like do it. Mm-hmm. So like, you just have to be like, go, go, go. Uh-huh. So I got really good at that. And then I also like, I feel like when I started photography, I was shooting a lot of people who had never really had their photo taken, mm-hmm. and I hadn't really taken that many photos at that point. So it was just, I think, getting familiar with like, making everyone feel comfortable in the situation. Um, And I shoot like a lot of women and a lot of women like to hire me because they're like, we don't want to work with like a creepy male photographer. And I was like, I get you, Mm -hmm. I get that. And so I've always tried to be like that very like inviting, like Mm -hmm. comforting person. And it's also funny because I still get told that all the time. Everyone's like, oh my God, like you're so easy to work with. And I was like, are other people hard to work with? Like, I don't know. Yeah. Uh huh. (laughs) Or sometimes like, artistic people are just a little weird they are you know yeah like and there's nothing wrong with that like i know so many creatives that are like forking weird yeah or they're just like dead silent they like won't even say anything yeah, because, and i'm like okay tell me what to do please yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but i'm the type of person like i it, when i'm in front of the camera like i'm uncomfortable i need validation i yeah. want someone to be like you look forking hot even when i don't yeah. like i need someone to like be on the level of energy that i am when i'm behind the camera yeah. gassing someone up no i definitely do that i feel like and so that's so appreciated yeah and it's one of those things where it's like also working with so many people and like word of mouth and everything you make so many friends your network grows mm-hmm. so big and so yeah i feel good that i can like walk into any room and like know somebody and like mm-hmm. have a rapport with them totally so, it's yeah. actually so crazy how much being a photographer is about simply like gassing your client up oh yeah it's mostly networking it's It's crazy it's i've always told people this they're like what's your advice for like people who want to like be a photographer and i'm like honestly i feel like fake giving advice because i simply am one of those people who is always like right place right time i kind of met a lot of artists as they were becoming famous before they were anything Mm -hmm. really and i was kind of like getting in there like right on their like come up kind of which is an interesting position to be in Mm -hmm. but it's just a lot of who you know type Mm -hmm. of things and yeah that's that's most of it that's like probably 60 percent of it yeah no it's crazy (laughs) it really is how do you maintain those relationships once once you meet them at the right place right time like how do you make it not weird when you want to ask them for a favor or you want to see if you can shoot their next show or like you know what i mean yeah like to reach out that second or third time like that's still a challenging place to be in because it's not like your best friends yet yeah um i mean i think my first thing is that a lot of the artists i like started working with like when i started doing music photography i i did a lot of like rap and hip-hop stuff so Mm -hmm. i was working with like Hoodie Allen, Mod Sun, G Easy, Black Bear, like Skizzy Mars, like way back in the day. And the thing is, when you live in Portland, Oregon, um, and you want to be on the guest list, that's easy. It's like me plus seven every single time. And I, (laughs) (laughs) they're like, yeah, you can come. Like nobody else is coming. No one's here. Literally. And that's so so true. It is one of those things where I kind of fostered these relationships with people while I was in college, especially Uh because. They knew me as like that Portland photographer. Mm -hmm. I was just like that girl in Portland who was taking photos all the time. And every tour comes through Portland because Pacific Northwest is like a huge like music scene. So I would see them over and over and over again. I would text them and be like, hey, like I want to come shoot the show. Like da da da. And you build like a good, I don't know, like professional you know, basis mm-hmm. where I'm like sending great photos. I send them really fast. They're posting on Instagram. They're tagging me. Da, da, da. I, they're coming to Portland. They'll be like, hey, like, are you around? You want to come shoot the yeah. show? You want to like, no one doesn't want photos. Exactly. Exactly. And they're like, and then like, do you want to go to a bar after? Do you want to mm-hmm. hang out? Do you want to like get dinner before or something? And so I was hanging out with like just these amazing people all the time and kind of like right before any of them were very famous. And I think, you know, it was like right place, right time. But maintaining those relationships, I mean, I would see people everywhere. I would see people at music festivals. I see people when I'm visiting LA or mm-hmm. when I'm working in LA. And it's just like they become like your friend, like mm-hmm. your long distance friend. And I think, um, th- again, that was a lot of word of mouth too. Mm-hmm. Like they would be like, oh, like you need a photographer, like hire Nazarin, like whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'll always appreciate those people that I like worked with like first off in my career who like really put me on and like gave me that platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I th- think you're so good at too is it's so simple and silly. People are going to be like, what is you 
whenever you see someone that you've met before or you've met on the internet, you will immediately go up and say hi. Yeah. Like you are not weird. People in LA are weird. Like, People, like they are. The amount of times <laughs> I've like had like weird like stare offs when it's like we've literally DM'd multiple times and they're just scared. Like they have social anxiety. They're scared. But I think one thing that's really good about you is you're like, hey, yeah. oh my God, how are you? Like, and it, which makes the other person so happy because they're like, oh my God, thank God. Like, I was scared to say something and you're so good about that and it's so simple, but it means a lot. I think that's another part of like maintaining relationships too. I'm never going to be like that bitch who's like standing in the corner yeah. acting so weird. That's weird. It's like, why would you ever want to work with that person again? Or why would they <laughs> ever so text true. me? They were like, yeah, Nesrin was acting crazy at the club the other night. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean. But pe- people do that all the time. Being do friendly, being outgoing. Oh my God, in LA, everyone's <laughs> it's insane. Weird. It's weird. People are crazy. Like I've had people that I like have been to like their birthday parties before act like they've never met me. Oh, <laughs> No, there's been times where I've been like, no, we literally we were flirting last week. Yeah, I'm like, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. the type of person too, I'm like, you don't remember? Like, we literally did this. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's like they do remember, but they'll act too cool and like won't come up yes. to you, won't say hi. Or like you go say hi to them and they're like, oh, hey. I, it's, so, it's so bizarre to me. It's so crazy. And it's mean. And it's also though, I feel like, I don't know, we're not from LA yeah. originally. And uh-huh. I think it's... Something you get in other parts of the country where you're like, what is wrong with you? Like, that's weird. Because here people are acting like that's normal and it's absolutely not. That's so true. We need to normalize calling out when that's weird. Like, I want to start being like, Oh, this is kind of weird. Yeah, that you're acting like you. I don't mean, know me, me and my friends will talk about it like the next day. We'll oh, do a little absolutely. debrief. Yeah, and I'll be like, "What? What was that?" I love a debrief. Yeah. <laughs> what in the Sam hell was that? Yeah. Thank you so much to Chime for sponsoring this episode of Making Moves. What goes great with a summer vibe? How about a checking account with no monthly fees? Like a cool breeze, Chime is a refreshing way to handle your money. With no monthly fees, no maintenance fees, or minimum balance fees, it's how banking should be. And when you need access to your money, you can do so fee-free at more than 60,000 in network ATMs at many locations like most Walgreens, 7-Elevens, and CVS. You can also send money to anyone, even if they aren't on Chime. Fee-free for you and no cash out fees for them. Chime, no monthly fees, no vibe killing fees sign up for a chime checking account it only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score get started at chime.com slash tk that's chime.com slash tk chime is a financial technology company not a bank banking services provided by and debit card issued by the bancorp bank or stride bank na members fdic out-of-network ATM withdraw fees apply except at MoneyPass ATM in a 7-Eleven location and at any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. Other fees such as third-party and cash deposit fees may apply. What are like absolute no-nos, never do this, like being a photographer, being around these like high-profile people, like don't do this, don't ask this, like, Ooh. you know what I mean? I, I want to know, like, how avoid this, like, tips and tricks for people. That's a good one. I mean, one of the ones that I talked about on my Instagram story recently, when someone had asked me, like, um, how do you decide, like, what photos to post, or do you get approvals from every client and oh, stuff? Oh, great question. Yeah, and I normally... I have approvals from almost every client or they'll be like, oh, I really love these ones, but I like don't like this photo or mm-hmm. whatever. And then I one of the things that really pisses me off is like these. I don't, I don't even want to say it in a mean way, but like kids who really want to be a photographer. Mm-hmm. And let's say they go to like Rolling Loud and mm-hmm. they like are just taking their camera, taking a bunch of pictures of people. They will just post like a terrible photo of someone simply because the person is famous. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh my God, like doing this for the clout. Like, and they're like tagging the person and stuff. I was like, I'm sorry, that's a hideous photo. They're never going to use them again. Well, and if, yeah, if you want to work at all, why would you post that? Because it's not a good photo. And I think a lot of people really get. I don't know, a little bold when they're taking photos of like musicians or famous people or whatever. And they're just kind of like posting whatever. And I think being a little more discerning and like really kind of realizing what is a good photo of someone? What's a flattering angle? What do you think this person will like? Is this the type of photos that they would post of themselves? And like knowing that. And like maintaining the integrity of your brand yes. and like your relationship. I don't care how famous somebody is. If I take a bad photo of them, like I'm not posting that. That's embarrassing for everybody involved. Yeah. Like <laughs> it is. And you won't get hired again. No, no. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that's one thing. And 
I don't know. I, I also do let clients like edit photos if they want, if they're uncomfortable with something, if they're oh, like, hey, awesome. I want to face tune this or whatever. I'm like, you know what? Knock yourself out. Like, go for it. Just send it back to me so I have the same version. So I feel like that's another thing that I'm just like, I know not all photographers do that, but I would prefer the client being comfortable mm -hmm. than like me just posting like whatever I want. Mm -hmm. um, that's really, really cool. I think that you do that actually. Yeah. Because I think that is what make someone like feel trusted by yeah, them or they, totally. they have your trust they're like okay like i don't know i feel like that stands out to me that's yeah. really cool that you do that i i feel like a lot of photographers have started doing that but back when people were like asking me to do that like years ago i was like oh my god yeah of course and i didn't think it was this normal uh -huh. um trying to think what else you shouldn't ask i don't know i if i don't know a client super well i'll kind of just like shut the fuck up and like not be annoying, not ask too many questions, mm -hmm. not be like too much on set because I want to be seen as like professional and like just like easy to work mm -hmm. with and like keep my head down type of thing. But um, yeah, I'm at the point now where I'm I'm like friends with a lot of my clients. It's fun. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I have like very good like witty banter with everyone. I love working with like Madison Pettis. Mm -hmm. um, She's so freaking cool. So freaking cool. Mm -hmm. um, um, the game plan. Oh, she's, icon. A, she's an icon. Iconic. She's an American legend. <laughs> <laughs> she's America's sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, and like her and I have become super good friends. Also, like I worked with Olivia O'Brien for so long, oh. so, so long. And we were like sisters and she music. was just someone I could talk to about like mm -hmm. everything. Um, she's so, I feel like underrated. Oh my God. Yeah. It's crazy. She's to very me, talented. She's not like way bigger than she, I mean, she's very huge, talented. but like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I've always kind of thought that I'm like, I don't know what it is. Her music so freaking good yeah oh she's and amazing branding like and the she's videos so nice she's so funny like oh, I, she's so funny I on the Olivia. internet yeah I she's love so Olivia. funny on the internet um but yeah so some people i get really close to and uh -huh. i feel like i can just talk to them about everything um other people you know you rein it in a little bit mm -hmm. it's just kind of at your discretion mm -hmm. but yeah i feel like that's a big one though i think people get way too comfortable way too fast and then the person gets freaked out your clients will get freaked out and they and get be like, You're lazy weird. people yeah. get lazy yes and they, they do yeah yeah I've seen that even with being on set, working like with my own people. If someone on set starting to get lazy, we immediately notice and they're not w welcome back. The I next mean, time. yeah, they they just start treating it like the friend group like yes. hang, and it's like it is the friend group hang, but like you're also getting paid to be here. Yeah, so, like do I feel your like job. The, yeah, it's, I feel like it's the friend group hang last. Like it's mm -hmm. your job first. Yep, always, uh -huh. always. Um, who was like the first big person that you shot? Um, first really big person that I shot was Macklemore, but he didn't know that was happening. I just like snuck my camera into a free concert at the university in my hometown. Stop, that's so, so cool. Oh my God. And it's also so funny because he iconic. followed me like during the pandemic. He followed me on Instagram and I was like, hey, like Wait, you're a little stop. late. Yeah. <laughs> you're a little late. <laughs> Because I'm like, I don't, I don't even think he knows that. But yeah, so I was really big on Tumblr. Like that's how I got my like my start in social media. And so cool. Yeah. And I had started doing photography because at my school, like we had a dark room. So we had a film lab. So I took film classes. And no, we had just like a fuck ton of followers on Tumblr. I read about yeah, this. Yeah. I had like 75, 85,000. Yeah. It was it was like a lot because especially at that time, nobody had followers. No, I did my research. And I was oh like, God. I know. <laughs> you were a Tumblr girl. I was a Tumblr girl. Okay. So continue. Um, you had the... um. Dark room. Oh, yeah. So we had to shoot like a roll of film a week. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there was just like a free Macklemore and Ryan Lewis concert mm -hmm. at Oregon State University, like where I grew up. And um, I, I don't know. I just like took my camera. I took photos. I posted them on Tumblr and they like kind of went off. And from there, that's how I got in touch with a lot of artists because they like saw my photos on Tumblr and they were like, oh, wait, like this girl's kind of good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't think Macklemore ever saw him. And uh, honestly, he shouldn't because at this point I look at them now and I'm like, they're terrible. I think I actually deleted them at one point because I was like, they're not good. I feel like you're due for a coffee date or something. Yeah. No, he's super cool, though. And he's like from the Northwest. And so mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. Yeah. He's like really into golf now, I think. Yeah. I think he started like a brand. Yeah. Like a golf like, lifestyle. Boys brand. Yep. or something. But this stuff's like super cute. No, I know. I yeah. like golf. So I don't know why I like, oh. know this much about Macklemore. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. I love it. <laughs> he's like awesome. But um, I would say the first big artist who was aware that I was taking his picture, G Easy. And, really? Yeah. How did you like, make that friends. connection? Um I think oh actually I do know because we just talked about this. I did like a like a thing with him for MTV the other day. Um we were connected on Twitter because I had like posted on Tumblr or something and I was like, guys, like I want to shoot more concerts. Like who should I shoot with? Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And some girl was like, oh my God, you have to shoot G Easy. Like he's 
coming to Portland like in a mm-hmm. couple weeks or something. And I posted it on Twitter and I was like, like at G Easy, like we should shoot some time. And he goes, for sure. <laughs> And you're like, say less. Again, this was like another time. It was. Like, this would never happen today. That's so true. But, um, and then I was in LA though, like two weeks later, <laughs> and I was covering like a party or something here. And he was at the party. He's like, oh my God, you're that girl from Twitter. And Stop. I was like, oh my God, you're g <laughs> <laughs> but, was he? Was he nice? Oh my God, super nice. Stop. He's so nice. We're still very good friends. Oh my um, God. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've kept in touch for like 10 years now. Nice guy, whatever, you know. I work together with him here and there, but yeah, we just did something for MTV the other day and we were like, I can't believe I've known Known you for for 10 years. (laughs) How ironic that you're a literal Tumblr girl and he has a song Tumblr Girls. I know, it's crazy. Some of my friends were in that music video too. Stop. Yeah, he and I have like a lot of mutual friends. Uh So that was another thing. Like we just overlapped like socially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also underrated rapper. Oh, he's so good. Yeah. I yeah. still listen to No Limit. Like, it's on my playlist Great currently. Song. So good. Yeah. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so, g Easy was, like, the first real. And then what would you get from there? Or who'd you get from um, there? I mean, yeah. He would always put me on. He would, like, tag me in all the photos, which, again, is, like, a huge thing because... Do you appreciate that so much? Yes. And being, like, a small photographer especially, mm-hmm. it was really, like, pivotal for me because it was as he was, like, coming up and, like, getting very famous. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people were like, oh, like, who's this girl taking these photos? And, um... Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, like, I can't even count the number of people that I've shot just through, like, word of mouth and stuff like that. Um, my first, like, big tour that I did while I was still in college was Warp Tour, summer of 2015 oh my with Mod Sun. So cool. Yeah, and so that was cool. Again, that was also before Mod Sun was, like, really big. Mm-hmm. I feel like now, like, household name, everybody knows who he is. Oh, yeah. Back then, not that big, but it was still, like, so fun. It was uh-huh. a really good experience. Um, and practice. I think people underestimate yeah. like experience and oh, practice. And they always say like, if you can survive warp tour, you can survive anything. Those are truly like the most brutal touring conditions. <laughs> like it's deranged. Like it's actually crazy. <laughs> but it was fun. You know, we had a good summer. Whatever. I came out of it alive. And um, I just I feel like it set me up for like, okay, is this what you really want to do? And I was like, yes, this uh-huh. is what I want to do. And then. Let's see. I don't know. I would shoot a lot of really random shows. I kind of scheduled my classes in college. So I was like in class Monday through Thursday, like mostly just Uh the mornings or early afternoon. Every night I would like try and shoot shows. Weekends I would like come to L.A. if I could get something. Yes, I was fully like hustling. It was like no college student should be living like that. Mm -hmm. I never slept. I was always like Mm -hmm. somewhere drunk, (laughs) taking pictures. Like Or should they? Yeah. Right. Right. I feel like you burn out very quickly. Yeah, true. Um, But yeah, so I was working with like all these bands, all these artists going to L.A. on the weekends. And then by the time I graduated, I finished school early. Um, I was on a three month arena tour with Kiara. We mm-hmm. were opening for the chain smokers. Sick. So that was really cool. Um, again, just like a really good experience. It's a long tour and like those shows are like just so massive. I'm like running around, I'm doing like thirty thousand steps a day, and then I have to come back and like edit all the photos and like crazy. Again, like getting no sleep. But it was really fun. Um, yeah, and then I toured with like Olivia for years mm-hmm. and did a bunch of festivals and stuff with different artists. Um, and then, like, here we are post-pandemic. And so it's kind of like, oh, I Starting don't know. up again. Do you think you'll go, you, would you want to go on tour again? I think I would, but also, like, I don't know. I was a lot younger when I was doing all of uh-huh. that. And now that I've kind of taken a step back and, like, done a bunch of other things with my career, I'm not sure if that's what I would want to do full-time anymore. Mm-hmm. Just because, so, like... 2018 2019 I was working with YouTube and I was doing all of their events and stuff and that was just so fun that's really cool and and also just like the the paycheck makes more sense to me because I I would say they probably pay well they pay well but I was also like working for like one or two weekends a month and then I kind of had more free time to just like explore other options Mm -hmm. in my life I could do portraits I could do branded Mm -hmm. stuff I was doing my own like influencer content and when I'm on tour I can't accept any other jobs Mm. and so it it was just it gave me a little more freedom to kind of like fully decide what I wanted to do as a photographer and um yeah and then with the pandemic and stuff, there were no more events. There were no more concerts. Mm-hmm. So I really kind of pivoted to doing a lot of like influencer stuff mm-hmm. and like personal like celebrity photography and like paid posts for influencers mm-hmm. and like all of that. And yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's just made me a lot more well-rounded. Like I can go into anything now and just be like, yeah, I can shoot that. Yeah, confident yeah. In, yeah. in whatever you're shooting. I'm, yeah. That's really cool because 
it's good to have you know experience in all of those things so then you can decide truly like what is your passion exactly and I think I had boxed myself into music photography for a long time which like I still love it and I still shoot shows all the time and I do a lot of stuff for artists and I would love to tour again but I'm like I don't think that's like my only like mm-hmm. end all be all anymore so yeah. do you have any dream clients still that you would love to like potentially go on tour with or just shoot? Yeah, I mean, so after I kind of stopped working with rappers, I was just like, I felt like I hit a ceiling where I was like, okay, I'm just taking a lot of photos for like white men. And I just, where are we going with this? You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And so I started working with women. I was working with like Kiara and Olivia and I shot some stuff for like, Sigrid and like Lennon Stella Mm -hmm. and sick yeah and I was just like I like working with cool girls and I like helping women like just have cool visuals and like develop you know their image and stuff um so now I'm very into like I really want to shoot for pop girls like shooting Megan Thee Stallion was a bucket list thing that was probably best day of my life she was literally so did you shoot her um I shot her for something for Spotify which I actually don't think the thing ever came out but it was also for um, album promo for Good News. Stop. So it was just like in a studio. Oh my um, god! Somewhere and you in met Hollywood. her and everything. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, and I had her laughing. Like I was telling jokes, and Stop. she was like, "You're so funny." And I was like, "You're funny, girl." Oh my god. <laughs> oh. She was really, really cool. But oh my god, yeah. I love her so much. Oh, I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. So like Meg The Stallion, I love working with Halsey. She is one of my favorite people uh-huh. ever. I really just admire her so much, and She's I've so known creative. her for so long, and like. Like the first time I ever shot Halsey, I took a bus for three hours from Portland to Seattle just to shoot the first three songs because I got a press pass for her Seattle show. Stop. And yeah. And I was like, I'm doing this. And I slept on my friend's floor in Seattle and stuff. And I'm just like now to like be friends with her and like shoot, you know, her looks for the Oscars. Uh-huh. Or whatever. I was like, that was insane. Yeah, that you did do that. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. That is crazy. And um, yeah, so I love working with her. But like Miley, like Charlie XCX, like I, like I don't even know Dua Lipa, like any of those like mm-hmm. really cool pop girls. Um, I feel like would I could be sick. so see you doing that. Yeah, so for sure, we'll see, we'll mm-hmm. see. But is yeah. there anyone that you have shot that you're like, holy shit, you were insanely photogenic? Oh, a lot of people. Really. Yeah. Because I feel like th- people surprise me, too. I'm like, I mean, whoa. Even Posing the- is like a skill. Oh, yeah. It's a skill. I think um, also, though, just the way some people photograph, like, you wouldn't really expect it. Like, you'd see them in real life and you're mm-hmm. like, oh, like, you're really pretty. But, like, the photos just, like, don't look real. Yeah. Um, the other day I was shooting for my friends. Um, do you know Posse? Like Jaden and Marley, Mm-mm. they like run a, a PR agency, but they did like a collab with one of the sunglasses brands that they work with and we were shooting it and it was kind of like they wanted like high flash, like very grungy, like on Hollywood Boulevard, like whatever. And it was just them and a bunch of their friends and like a, uh, like a Hummer limo. Uh, so oh we were gosh, like, cool. no, it was like insane. We were driving the Hummer limo and we like park <laughs> on Hollywood Boulevard and everyone's getting out like chain smoking cigarettes, Stop. just like laying on the ground. Like it was insane. And there was this one girl though. Uh, I think her name's Ren. We followed each other on Instagram. I had to double check, but she was just like someone's neighbor. Like one of the people at the shoot was like, oh, my neighbor's hot. Like I'm going to bring her to the shoot. Stop. She looks like Kylie Jenner. Like Stop. it's crazy. Did you see those photos I posted? Maybe. I don't know. They ended up in Paper Magazine because Paper Wait, really liked them. Wait, then I did. Yeah. I need and to look she's them up like, right now. she's like posing like in the limo and they're like pouring a glass of champagne on her ass. And I was just like, who is this girl? <laughs> Where are these? Oh my God, I see it. Yeah. And she had like never modeled before. She was telling me. And I was like, Stop. well, you should start. <laughs> I saw you, wasn't that like a big goal of yours to get in paper? Yeah. Oh, well, one of the first events that I ever went to, one of my first like big like influencer things was a paper magazine party at Coachella in 2016. Stop. I don't know how I got into that. Like I, looking back, my outfit was hideous. I didn't really know anybody (laughs) there. I think one of my friends who, she's a model, I think she just like had a plus one and Mm -hmm. I like went, but I was like, I don't know how I was there. So um, being a plus one is the best. Oh, it's the best. That's the best. It's the that. best. But like looking back on that, that didn't make any sense. Yeah. And I was like in Kylie Jenner's Instagram story that day too. Stop. No, it was like a big deal. People were like freaking out. People from my hometown, from my college, because I was still we're in college sharding. at that point, they were like, you're on Kylie Jenner's Instagram story. I was like, am I? Oh, oh I don't know. You're like, mm, <laughs> but now. yeah, that was like one of the first cool, like big events I ever went to. And um, yeah, I shot that for paper and then I shot another event for them the other night. And so they're also so like, cool out there yeah, yeah. And cool and like they're always pushing the limit yeah and i love that and Did you so see Kim's? that's been fun that oh my god yes yeah her ass yeah. oh my god insane dude she's so cool <laughs> i was like she literally always impresses me yeah anyway okay speaking of posing do you have any posing tips for people like 
for Ooh. wannabe IG baddie myself, like I'm like, what? Yeah. Tell me, give me a posing tip. I mean, my main thing is I always tell people to like move around and yeah. like look natural because I I be getting bitches who are like stiff and they'll do like Lego hands is what me and my sister call it uh-huh. where you like hands are like this at your <laughs> sides and um, yeah, I always tell people move around, be natural, kind of arms away from your body, uh-huh. like that type of thing. Um, I think also practicing does make you better. Like if you're looking in the mirror and like at your face and Uh stuff and you can kind of figure out like what looks good or what you like to look like in photos, that helps. Because then you're not just taking like a million with like no goal. Totally. (laughs) What about with um, like someone shooting? I'm I'm thinking of influencers. Like when they have like their tripod Mm -hmm. and trying to shoot themselves like – would you when you say move around like act like you're walking or like you know like, what I mean like setting your tripod yes, up and okay. anything like that I I have like a bluetooth remote for my oh, phone yeah. for my tripod so when I'm doing it I'll just like move around take a million or I'll like set up the shot and figure out where I want to be standing in it or like mm-hmm. what I want to look like I don't know just planning out the photo makes it so much easier yeah, yeah. I would agree with that circling back to our tumblr talk yes. Do you think the Tumblr aesthetic is like fully coming back? Oh my god, yeah, Indie Sleeves, we need her. Really? Yeah, I think we need her. Okay. Like like skins, like, you know, grungy eyeliner, like yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Even like the filters that we used to use. Okay, I don't know about that, but also as everyone's been using like their shitty digital cameras. Yes, that's what I was gonna ask you. Like, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I I mean, I kind of like it. I have like a nicer like point and shoot digital camera <laughs> that I use all the time for like party photos and stuff. And mine obviously like I edit them, I make them look a lot more like professional, mm-hmm. but they're so fun. And I, I also am a very big fan of just like taking random photos for memories. Like that's what I do with like my friends on film series on Instagram. Mm-hmm. I just take random photos and I'm like I don't care what it is I want to remember like moments like with my friends and stuff so I love that I do think it's like some of them are arguably bad I think we all (laughs) as a society need to get better at taking pictures Mm -hmm. but like well we can work on that Mm -hmm. do you have any camera recommendations for someone that wants to be like that aesthetic like tumblr girly but like doesn't want to break the bank Ooh, that's a really good question I mean if you want like a DSLR like a nice like big camera Mm -hmm. like obviously Canon like 5D Mark IV is what Mm -hmm. I shoot on I really want to upgrade to the R5 which is like mirrorless but like if you want kind of like that like weird like shitty digital camera look um, I feel like everyone's using that the vlog camera the Canon like G7X or whatever or like like that even the Nikon cool pics like older like older like very compact no people are using that silver Canon one oh the power shot maybe yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah that one yeah the g7x like low-key is good yeah it's kind of good yeah, i was gonna say good. that's like a better quality yes, version and it's low-key expensive like the power shoe one is yeah. like it's like looks tumbler <laughs> well, <laughs> but like not that's the thing though it's like 10 megapixels yeah, and yeah. so i'm like it kind of depends on the quality you want uh-huh. the little like point shoot that i use is the leica deluxe 7 mm-hmm. which is like 18 megapixels which is pretty good for like what it is and it comes with like a detachable flash and Mm -hmm. everything and it kind of gives you that like lo-fi look but like a little better quality (laughs) wait that's so cool yeah i I need to check out that camera it's nice i use it for parties and stuff like if someone hires me to do like very candid like party photos i Uh use that is it small yeah really small it's like it's like the size of like a little you know point Point shoot. shoot yeah what are your thoughts on instagram reels like being a photo person like Uh, Do you think it it makes me so sad genuinely like that I feel like when I post a photo it's not going to do as well Yeah, as I it's up I post a reel it's so and I don't even watch reels So it's like no, I don't know The only reason I kind of started making reels is because they gave me the reels play bonus and they were like We'll literally pay you us american dollars to post a reel and I was like, okay, you got me (laughs) No, no same and because they perform better like they're pushing that kind of but not all the time because now that they've introduced the play bonus they kind of want to keep your reels views down so they don't have to pay you as much so yeah i haven't signed up for that in my eyes like i hope i don't get like canceled for saying this adam masseri is public enemy number one like i think that man hates us (laughs) like i literally i just i feel like he does not give a shit um i feel like instagram doesn't give a shit and they just want it to be like a they just want to make money they want it to be like a shopping platform and also it's so and no one uses that just make a different app make a different app yes literally (laughs) no one uses that tab yeah right have you ever shopped on anything oh no no why would i give instagram.com my credit card information (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Also, I've never gone to the Just Reels tab no. to like scroll. No. I think I've done it once or twice to like find a sound if I need yeah. to like post a reel or something. But 
Yeah, I don't know. It's it's also just very disappointing because I got a lot of my start like right at the beginning of kind of the Instagram like community team. I don't know if you ever knew about this, but it was like they would push um, suggested users every month. And so like when someone joins Instagram, it's like, welcome to Instagram. Here's who you should follow. And it would be three accounts. And so I was that for a month. Shut up. They did like a huge blog post on me. They like featured me on like at Instagram. They Wait, fe- that's amazing. Oh, it was huge for my career How'd they do also. That? So in twenty sixteen, um, they had just found my account. They really liked me. They liked my photography. And they had like reached out and they were like, Hey, we'd love to feature you on like at so Instagram. Kind. We'd love to make you a suggested user. Da, da, da. Well, and they had this thing called the community team. And it was like this group of people that worked at Instagram who were just constantly looking for like really cool creators to like feature and like work mm-hmm. with and like talk to. And especially I love that like after they featured me, after they talked to me, they would like do little events in Portland, like mm-hmm. focus groups. And they would invite me and like all my friends mm-hmm. and they'd be like, who else do you think we should reach out to? They would like ask people like real Instagram users mm-hmm. for like recommendations and like feedback and like, like all felt these very things. seen. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, I think they like fired everyone. I don't know. I never heard from them again. Like a year or two later. It was like 2017, 2018. Never heard from them again. Weird. And I was like, "Mm, what's going on? Yeah. And then things just started changing and I don't like it. Damn. Yeah. So do you think like, do you think there will ever be a time where just like photos are not a thing on Instagram? Because I feel like no, but. I don't think there will be a time where their photos aren't a thing. But I think it used to be such a platform that catered to a photographers but be just like regular people because people just like want to take pictures with their friends and like post like even when you think i think instagram also does this thing now where they're like we care about creators i was like okay cool what about regular people no (laughs) what about people who aren't creators like this isn't about me like this is about everybody else but also they don't care about creators no anyway no they like instagram saying like we care about creators is like a man saying like you're the only girl i talk to (laughs) i'm sorry like that's insane (laughs) that's my tiktok clip they literally hate me that's so true (laughs) yeah and I, yeah, I don't know. I just I think being someone who's seen Instagram grow and like been like really on the other side of things, it's very disappointing to watch. So what do you think they should be doing? Um, I think they should. Well, I, I don't know about everyone's like really up in arms about like getting a chronological feedback. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's the answer. I think just actually seeing everything from everyone you post mm-hmm. or everyone you follow like I don't know. There's so many people that I follow that I don't see anything they post. I have to go to their profile and I'm like, I, did I mute you on accident? No, literally. No, I didn't. I mm-hmm. just don't see anything. And so then I, think, I have strangers on my feet. Yes. Yes. And, and I, suggested posts and ads. I think it needs to go back to seeing everything from everyone you follow and also like somewhat in order. Like, uh, agreed. Whether it's a reel or a photo, I'm just like, lay it all out for me. Don't mm-hmm. tell me that I only want to watch videos because I don't. Mm-hmm. And I literally will just go to Twitter. Like, yeah. I, I will close out the app and go to Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's it's really sad because I feel like th- it was so iconic, like the Instagram era of like. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah. Well, and it's a huge component of my career. I mean, being same someone who's chronically online mm-hmm. since the age of like 14, I'm just like, I don't know where I would be without like Tumblr and without Instagram and without Twitter and mm-hmm. like all these things. And I'm like, it's it's a shame that that's lost. It's yeah. magic. You the know, one thing that I still think it has going for it and it'll never like become irrelevant because of this is like the DM feature. Oh yeah, and, for sure. And how you can DM someone e- even if you don't follow or yeah. they don't follow you. Like you can still get DMs from people. Yeah. Which is so nice. Um, speaking of apps, Be Real. Let's talk about it. Oh my God, yeah. We're friends on Be Real. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think it's gonna remain a thing? Is it the next big thing or is it already passed? I here's the thing. I think it's fun and silly, but I also I'm just like this isn't going anywhere. Like I'm not going to add random people back. Like like I posted like a screenshot of one of my reels like on my Instagram story and a million people like tried to add me. Same. And I was like, "Babes, no, cuz if I add you, then I have to see your photos and I simply don't care. Uh-huh. So I'm only adding like close friends on there, like people I know personally. Also, I don't like people knowing where I am in the moment. No, they don't need to know. I turned off my location thing for that because yeah. I was like, mm, no. Um, <laughs> mm, no. And I think it's like fun to like share with your friends and stuff, but there's definitely going to be a point where we're like, okay, we're done being real. <laughs> we're done being real. <laughs> yeah. I totally feel like, you know what I think is the most genius thing about it is the reaction feature. Yeah, that's fun. It's cute. Yeah, because it's like seeing someone like in real life being like, (laughs) 
like yeah. whatever i don't know something about that i totally can see first of all instagram implementing a be real feature you know they're gonna they like already tried they put in the dual camera thing as soon as we all did start. oh yeah they have a filter where it's both Stop. screens both of your camera screens um, so you know they're either gonna like buy the app or just steal their idea yeah. which they'll probably steal that Thousand idea percent. and then but it's gonna be when it's already over like no. we're already gonna be sick of it and then they're gonna be like hey guys it's it's instagram moment time yes, yes. like, I'm like <laughs> And we're like we're done with yeah, that. Yeah, they call us. That's so true. Um, same with the. I feel like they're gonna have a thing where it's like, okay, now it's time to be real on Instagram, and they're gonna like implement somehow. You do reactions. Like I can t- so see them yeah. doing that. And it's like we just don't need more things on that app. Mm-hmm. There's so much junk on Instagram that I'm like, <laughs> I just want to like, post a picture. Let be real. Have some moment. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will say though, I feel like there is an opportunity which I feel like Be Real is gonna do, which is a little scary. Is like. Instead of it being a photo, being a video. Oh, I hate that. You know that they're going to do it. Oh, my God. I saw this tweet the other day that was like, it was like, it's be real, but it records audio of you for 24 hours and picks like 10 seconds to post every day, like (gasps) at random. And I was like, no, that's like my worst. Oh, my God. (laughs) One of my friends sent it to me. She was like, girl, we got to stop talking shit if they come out with this app. And I was like, yeah. (laughs) Literally. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. You know what, though? I will say what I do love about it is like. It is the first app in a while where I've actually seen my friends post and like my normal friends post. Yeah. Like you just see everybody's face at like the exact same time. Yeah. It's fun. Instagram's become so curated. Like my normal friends won't post unless they're doing something insane. Yeah. You know, I know. I feel like a lot of people feel that pressure about Uh posting lately. It's I don't know. I, I go in waves of like hating posting and then like, fuck it. I'll just post whatever I want. Um, but yeah, it's, it like stresses you out and be real is like easy it's so easy yeah. and it's fun like i don't know and you have to do it every single day otherwise yeah. you feel left out yeah. i don't know i don't know something about it. yeah i love that i like have to do it so i can see other people yeah it's fun it is fun um so you're a big twitter girl huge twitter girl okay tell me about it why do you love it so much um i mean i have always loved twitter i've been on twitter since 2009 so it well, is... you were like on like the super bowl Oh, thanks. Yeah, girl. I'm like Twitter loves you. It's also so funny, too, because I've always loved Twitter and I was working VidCon one year and um, like during one of my breaks, Twitter has like a booth in like the creator area. Oh, where sick. It's like creators only and you could go like make like an airbrush shirt. And so I went and I had them airbrush. Iced coffee is a meal on a shirt because that's something I stand by. And um I got my shirt and then like the next day I had an email from Twitter that was like, hey, like we saw that you had like checked in at like the Twitter booth and like, I'm so sorry I missed you. But like, we just really wanted to catch up with you. Like if there's anything you need, Mm -hmm. like we love your tweet. And I was like, (gasps) Twitter loves my tweets. Wait, not literally all the apps emailing you personally. No, I know. And I was like, oh my God, Twitter loves my tweets. And um, That's crazy. So they were super cool. They helped me get like my handle, like Black Prince without the underscore. They got me verified. They like did all this really cool stuff for me. And they've just given me so many like opportunities to like work with the brand, which is so fun. I've like shot events for them. Yeah, I did like the Super Bowl. I was on the roof of the Super Bowl. They so just cool. had people kind of send in like funny tweets about the Super Bowl and like mine got picked. And um, what was the tweet? It the the prompt was like um, Super Bowl predictions in like six words or less, and I was like, like someone's gonna drop it like it's hot or something because Snoop Dogg was playing the oh, the halftime yes. show, and I think they like must not have gotten enough like sports related tweets because mine <laughs> made it on the roof of SoFi Stadium. <laughs> so that was insane, and they sent they sent me like the drone footage of it, and I was like, no, literally stop. And um, I remember seeing that being like, actually, what the heck? Oh yeah, and they have also given me like a billboard in Times Square. Stop. Um, yeah, for New Year's last year, I did. It was again like kind of um, what are your like. 20 or what would you say to 2020 or something and i was like 2020 was a gemini and i don't need to explain that that's hilarious <laughs> and that was like on a billboard in new york city uh-huh. and just like really I mean, you're fun good stuff. with your words so that makes sense thank you i try it's just fun for me i like tweet all my dumb stupid little thoughts and it's like my platform where i like don't have to be like a professional celebrity photographer i can yeah. just be like funny so yeah i don't know i got through college like just tweeting like random like live tweeting like stupid shit that was happening and twitter stuff. fingers yeah i really <laughs> do like it's kind of dangerous i tweet a lot <laughs> That is hilarious. Yeah. Um, I feel like I forget to tweet. Like, are, are you like, oh, I have a thought. And then I immediately, if something happens, my first thought is I have to tweet that. Really? If something is on fire, I would tweet about it before calling 911. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's just like there. Yeah. It's waiting just, for it's, you to use. Twitter is permanently like in my head. Okay. 
<laughs> you know what? That makes sense. Um, okay, I feel like being a photographer and is essentially being an entrepreneur. Like it's it's a hard yeah. job. You're like a business you're, owner. Yeah, you are. Um, so I'm sure there's times where you're feeling like unmotivated. Maybe you're not getting much work. I don't know if you even have that oh, problem. Or it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I just how do you, what do you do when you're in a funk? You're feeling discouraged. You're feeling unmotivated. Um, you're like, is this the right career path for me? I, I don't know. I have one of those freakouts every once in a while. Oh, I have one every single day. I open my eyes in the morning and I say, what am I doing with my life? So how do you <laughs> talk yourself out of the spiral? Um, I think my first thing I do when I'm in a creative rut is I like stop doing photography and I like take a little break for a week or two. Ooh, great advice. Because I feel like the more I force it, the more miserable I become. True. Yeah. And unless I have like jobs that are just like hey like come shoot this event or whatever i don't know i just i don't really like doing things when i'm super unmotivated mm -hmm. um i don't know and then what helps me get back into it though is like once i have like a good idea like something creative i can just like hit up one of my friends like a model or something and we can just go like shoot something for fun no pressure whatever and especially like if i don't like the photos i just like won't edit them mm -hmm. i'll be like sorry girl i didn't like these and the model's usually like oh okay what's wrong with you but <laughs> i I just, I try not to force it. Like if I don't love something, I'm not gonna make myself do it because it'll make me hate it. Mm. And yeah, I don't know. And also like the way I keep photography fun for myself is through just like my like fun, like film photos with friends, mm -hmm. like my behind the scenes and stuff. And so I try to just lean into that when I'm not feeling like I wanna like take out the big clunky DSLR and yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it just feels harder than other days. It does, mm -hmm. it does. And yeah, especially times when I'm like not getting a lot of work and stuff and I'll start like getting stressed out. I really just like try to take me time. I like to go to workout classes. I like go to dinner with my friends. I'll go out. Mm -hmm. I'll just like do something else. Mm -hmm. And usually that brings you back to it because then you start to miss it. Mm -hmm. Who's someone that you go to those dinners with like when you're feeling a little eh and then you feel so good leaving the dinner? Um, like guaranteed you're gonna feel good. Chesco. Oh. I, I love, love Chesco. That. Yeah, guys. We love Chesco My here. best friend is named Chesco. We love him literally so much. Um, who else? Uh, oh. Also, Chesco went to IU, everyone. Oh, my God. He did. Yeah. Him and Brett and, like, I, Sylvie and, like, all these people. Everyone went to Indiana. What Wait. is that about? We breed good people. I Like, <laughs> I guess. But I'm like, I did not realize that many people. Yeah, Brett. Like had connections to Indiana, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No, because I introduced Chesco and Brett, and then they started talking about Indiana. I was like, "How do you we even know love anything and, about yeah, each yeah. other?" And Brett's little sister Danielle, yeah. she went to yeah. IU. Oh, they all had like a whole. Oh yeah. Me and Todd just like sat there, like, well, all right. No, I went on their <laughs> podcast, and literally they, they had to cut so much because we talked about IU for way too long. Y yep, that's exactly what they did when we went on their podcast. <laughs> I took Chesco on like with me, and they talked about Indiana for like forty five minutes. I was like, "You guys, can it's we talk about something trait. else?" No, like, honestly. <laughs> Mark your calendar because when IU starts like playing good teams in football because like you, they start off with the dinky mm -hmm. teams, I'm gonna start having IU themed parties and we'll oh, get you a shirt. I'll be there. We'll get you a jersey. Oh yeah, I'm I'm always there for like a good time, but I'm like I know nothing about this place. Like <laughs> no, it's crazy how many IU people are yeah, there. So yeah. well, I I feel like everyone went to Indiana and then they moved to LA. That's hilarious. Yeah, the Hollywood Hoosiers. Oh, and like I had a meeting the other day with like a founder of a brand, and we were at Soho House and. Brett walked in and he like knew this girl because they'd gone to Indiana and I was like I literally can't. <laughs> You're like trying to fit in like mm, I, yeah. I, I, was I was a like, Hoosier. What's yeah, going I love on? The <laughs> yeah. So anyway, there's that. I'm done. Um, okay. So Chesco, is there anyone else? Yeah. Uh, my friends Selena and Stefia, their sisters, their models. Oh, amazing. Um, I just love them so much. And Selena was like one of my very first friends in LA. I love. met her a really long time ago and like. I feel like it's rare to like keep friends in LA uh -huh. like for that long, yeah. you know. Um, and my other friend Alexa J. Mm -hmm. um, today's her birthday, so I'm oh going to her gosh. birthday dinner Shout tonight. Out. Happy Shout birthday. out! Shout out! Happy birthday, Alexa! Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I feel like I just have so many like very good like close friends who I can talk to about like anything, and mm -hmm. I yeah, just people who like make you kind of forget whatever you're worried about and like is whatever amazing. is going on in your life mm -hmm. yeah also people you know that actually have your best interest yes mm -hmm. yeah. without wanting anything in return yeah that's like uh, safe Un space unconditional love yeah yeah <laughs> is or who is like inspiring you that maybe isn't your friend or like you know is there like an account is there a like a hike you've been doing like it's something random Ooh. that like has been inspiring you like when you're feeling i don't know down like who do you look to whose account do you look to to get re-inspired uh, i don't know or is there anyone lately you feel like popping off in your head 
I mean, there are definitely some girls. I was talking to my friend the other day about this because she was like, who's your favorite influencer? And I was mm-hmm. like, that is such a good question. Who is your favorite? I feel like That's I have a, a couple question. a couple faves because there are some girls who I'm like, whatever they're posting, it's immediately going in my cart. Like, take my money. Like, I will pay for whatever. Wait, who? 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 Tell me. Um, I need to I know. I love, like, Devin Brugman. Do you know her? She owns yes! the Monday Swimwear. The Monday Swimwear. Nicest Wait, girl. I need to follow her. Yeah, nicest know. girl I've literally ever met. But Stop. also just, like, so She's inspiring. So hot. <laughs> so hot. But, like, I just love the way she, like, lives her life and I met her randomly at like a fourth or was it fourth of July some party like last year like a year ago I just went up to her and I was like hey I really love your Instagram and she was like oh my god like it's so nice to meet you like what's your Instagram I'll follow you back like so nice so welcoming and I just feel like I also just find like cool products and shit that I like through Mm her um also another Devin Devin Lee Carlson oh she's one of my favorites obsessed with her obsessed. obsessed. Anything Devin Lee Carlson is selling, I'll buy it. I'll, she also is <laughs> I'll actually like one of the nicest people I know. So nice. Again, so awesome. So fucking nice. Yeah. And oh, I do love Alex Cooper too. Oh yeah. She's and a I, good influencer. Yeah, I met her last year at New York Fashion Week and uh-huh. I was like, I just have to tell you, I've been listening to Call Her Daddy since like episode three uh-huh. and I'm just like obsessed with you. And I, I also love how much she's like kind of transformed that show totally. from like what it used 180. to be to what it is now because I still, you I like shoot her. I know. I really want to. Yeah. Um, but I liked it what it was then like it was just funny uh-huh. to listen to but I think now it's like so much more like empowering and inspiring mm-hmm. and just I love everything she does mm-hmm. and I'm constantly watching her Instagram story I'm like love you girl she and also it, takes like risks yes yeah. she does and she's like not afraid to be herself and I feel like that's something that I am to, I'm like a very like kind of overly confident to a fault almost. I'm like, I'm like violently independent. And I just feel like seeing that in other people is really cool. So See, last year, this like photo lives around free in my head. Her at New York Fashion Week with the braid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I took a photo of her with um, Madison when oh, she had really? that hair. Yeah, we ran into her at the like Bulgari party, I think. Uh-huh. But I, I like leaned across the bar and I was like, I love you so much. She's like, oh my God, I love you so much. <laughs> she was really nice. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, those are three. I need to, f- I just followed Devin, but like. I just, I feel like I love Devin, the- finding girls on Instagram and stuff who are like super cool and like I'm inspired by it, and then I meet them in person and they're awesome. Oh, that's the best Because sometimes you meet people from the internet in person and they kind of suck. It's like don't meet your idols vibes, but I like when I meet them and I really mm-hmm. like them. Uh, the two that I know, I don't know Devin Monday Swimwear, mm-hmm. Devin, I need to meet her, but like the other two, I, I just like, I-, I totally agree. Yeah. I feel like when I watch them, there's no like sense of like comparison or like yes. weird. You know when sometimes you follow someone you're like, why, why am I getting mad? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. But, and like, I, that's when I like telling myself I need to mute. You know who you would unfollow. really like? Um, Cami Crawford. Do okay. you know her? No. She's the co host on Catfish and she has a podcast called Relationship. Oh and my gosh. She is also, I started working with her mm, like a year or two ago and she is her. just the nicest, coolest girl and like keeps it so real. And just like, I am Stop. obsessed with everything about her. I love when people give me someone yeah. to follow. And she was another person though, where like I followed her on Twitter for so long because I thought she was like hilarious. And then one day she like like needed a photographer or something and like uh-huh. hit me up. And I was like, just so you know, like I'm fully obsessed with you. And she's like, oh my God, thank you so much. And she like, we've she's become so pretty cute. good friends. She's so cute. She's pretty. Yeah. Oh my God. Like gorge. gorgeous. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like she's another person. Like to me, she's just very inspiring, mm-hmm. like big sister vibes. Love. Yeah. I feel like we need to have, they're all almost needs to be a list lately i've been really into writing in my notes love list like lists yeah yeah what are your lists um like so many i feel like a lot of people on tiktok right now have been doing like the what's in and what's out yeah and i love those yeah because i have opinions okay well, okay we should play <laughs> the game because that's the last thing and yeah i uh i have the game but yeah i basically i've been making lists and i want to do one of like my favorite influencers yeah that's, that's a, good, a one. good list yeah anyway okay we are going to play a game called that I made up called <laughs> Slay or Nay. <laughs> I love it already. Instead of in or out. Okay. Basically, it's like... Uh, so are you giving me topics and I'm saying Slay or Nay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Welcome back to our first episode <laughs> of Slay or Nay, our segment. <laughs> Nazarin, I'm going to say something and you're going to tell me Slay or Nay and we're going to debate about it. Okay. You, you can tell me, you know. Yeah, I can justify can it. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Okay. First one. The Birkenstock Bostons, like the clogs. Mm. The clog or, or the sandal? The clog. 
here's the thing. I'm from Oregon. So growing up, people were trying to force Birkenstocks on my feet. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, please give me a pair of Nike mm-hmm. Dunks. Um, <laughs> but now they're very in. And so I, I like almost want to say slay, but like knowing how cringy they were when I was growing up, I like also want to say nay. <laughs> I'm gonna say nay. But I would say just, nay for me personally. Me too. But they're so in right now. That, yeah. Which is weird. Yeah. But I feel like also some people. I'm like, babe, that isn't your style. Just no. Like it's just because it's trendy doesn't mean you need to I get it. I see Birkenstocks on some people, and I'm like, that looks wrong. To it me. does. It, yeah. It's like, like let unsettling. it be for the Birkenstock queens. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay. Nay. Nay. Speaking of Jordans. Nay. I'm saying nay too. Because I think they had their moment. Here's the thing. Also, they make your legs look weird. <laughs> like high to- high top Jordans are big no for me. I just always feel like I'll see a girl in a super cute outfit and then I like pan down and there are high top Jordans. And I'm like, what are we doing, girl? I think they were such a fun moment. Yeah, they, they were like for a certain outfit or for a yeah. certain look, but people were overdoing it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like a black and white pair, yes. or like a dunk, like well, Yeah, that's like a easy. low top, Yeah, love. The but, high tops, no. Yeah, but now the crazy like sneakerhead ones, I think nay. No, yeah, it's a nay. Even though Jordans it, the, itself, like I feel like are classic. Yeah, but certain ones. But certain ones. Certain yeah, yeah ones. exactly. Yeah. And it also depends on how you style it. We overdid it. We on did the overdo it though, but like the, the the corset top, the baggy jean and the Jordans, it's like it's done. Yeah. It had its moment. Th- that was the thing. I think everyone wore that outfit for so long that I was like, I need people to stop doing this. It needs this. to be retired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it needs to be retired. Uh, matcha. Slay. I'm saying slay too. Yeah. yeah. I, I've always been a matcha girl. Me like too. so long ago. Well, my mom um is an English professor and she works at like a like a Japanese university. Um, Whoa, that's like, sick. Yeah, she teaches ESL, like uh, English as a second language. And so she was drinking matcha like a million years ago. Like I was a child and my uh-huh. mom was having like green tea and like matcha and stuff. And it became so trendy all of a sudden. I was like, wait, you guys didn't know about this? <laughs> wait, am I crazy or did I, am I remembering, are you part Japanese? No. I'm Moroccan. Then maybe this is someone else. My dad's Moroccan. Oh, yeah. whoa. That's so crazy. Random fact. That's really cool. I know. <laughs> so it, your mom works at a Japanese university? Um, Not anymore. Now she's actually at, um, I don't know if I should say the company, but a big okay. like, tech okay. company. Oh my yeah. God, sick. Yeah, but she used to be an English professor oh. at a university. Okay, whoa. okay. I feel like I met someone recently and I was like, whoa, you're, j- oh, you know who it is? Dom Roberts. Oh, yeah. Is she really? She's like, uh, I she's don't know if so it's Japanese. Cute. Yeah, but she definitely, one of her parents is Asian. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. No wonder she's so like freaking pretty. Yeah, but she's I gorgeous. Was like, oh my gosh. I, I love her really TikToks. Good skin, and I feel like Asians normally have really good skin yeah. too. So maybe that's why I thought. I love Dom's TikTok. She's so funny. She's so funny. <laughs> Dude. Um, yeah. Okay, that's what it was. Snapchat. Nay. Really? What are we doing on there in 2022? Okay. I think it's a Gen Z thing. Like, I think the kids have, like, resurged Snapchat. Like, it's it's back uh-huh. after Kylie Jenner had, like, canceled it. But I was like, at my big age, I'm not getting on Snapchat. Okay. I think <laughs> form of communication, absolutely nay. Although I, creators have been posting on there instead yes. of Instagram lately. So, therefore, I'm going to say slay because also they pay creators. Oh, yeah. Well, and, like, I don't hate Snapchat as an app. I'm just like, I don't have friends like my age like using it so if a, if I'm at a bar and a guy's like what's your snap I'm like are you 21 <laughs> <laughs> that's so true if someone asked me at my age like right now if I if for my snap I would actually like I'd be alarmed I'd, li- I'd just walk away yeah <laughs> actually yeah that, that would be crazy maybe I should start doing that to people and just like gaslighting them I should be like what's your snap and see what they say yeah. That's a funny joke. They'd be scared. No, if I was like, what's your snap? And then they were like, what? I'd be like, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. That's how you that's how you act younger. That's kind of you funny. Are. Yeah. <laughs> okay, dairy. Mm, nay. I mean I'm gonna say slay just because like I was I was gonna say I'm not one of those people who like is totally dairy free. I don't mm-hmm. drink milk. I, do, yeah, like, I don't drink milk an either. alternative milk. In my head, milk isn't dairy. <laughs> I'm thinking cheese. <laughs> Okay, so cheese, cheese is a slay, and ice cream is also a slay. Yeah. And yogurt is kind of a slay as well. But like actual milk. But milk, like no. Milk isn't dairy. <laughs> milk <guys>. isn't slay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I say I'm dairy free, I don't mean cheese, ice cream, or yogurt. Yeah, same. Yeah. No, literally. Okay, cool. Or frozen yogurt. I love that we're on the same page Yeah, this. <laughs> that's not actual dairy. No, it's yeah. not. Okay. There's something different. <laughs> Celery juice. Mmm. I, it was Slay a couple years ago. Like, we had I our phase. Nay. I think nay. I agree. TikTok. Slay. Slay, I think, too. I have so much fun on there. Um, Sherry and Young Gravy. Um, I think Slay. 
Here's the here's the thing though. Slay on Young Gravy's end. Yes. Nay on Sherry's end. Because girl, what are you doing? But also for him, I'm okay. like, go off, King. Yes. And also, I don't want to sound like, oh, like women can't date younger. No, not yeah. in an anti-feminist yes. way. I just think it's probably very embarrassing for her daughter. Yes, I'm thinking about her daughter. Like, I, like I'm sorry, Sherry and Monty have been acting like crazy people, and it's <laughs> it's it's not okay. It's not okay. If that was my parents, I would be so mortified. And so I can just imagine what I, Addison feels I'm like. I'm already so like I was so hurt by my parents' divorce. Like, yeah. literally, it was the worst thing that ever happened to me. Like, I I was like not okay. I cannot even fathom like how if, their behavior on the internet well yeah if they had like acted like that like oh my god it makes it 10 times worse i i mean in my and my parents are like friends and like they i feel like they had a divorce like the best way they possibly could yeah the fact that like they're also like in a raging fight they're dating younger people who are like and all we're this, literally like, publicly age. like online it's just a spectacle it's so beyond yeah. weird to me but also i met young gravy a couple weeks ago and i was like honestly love him he is so nice no i love young gravy yeah. slay on young gravies yeah uh, well, and also I though, think he's funny as i'm fuck. like i do love that he is like I love moms. And yeah. I'm like, I'm obsessed with that also, for you. Also, he's always said that. Yeah. Like, this isn't a new thing. No, like, this I've is, been a Young Gravy fan for like literally a couple honest. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like rocking with it. And I, I love that for him. No, but he's I'm just committed. like, I feel like Sherry and Monty are doing a lot. I just feel so bad for Addison. I don't want to even talk about it more because it yeah. makes me mad. But I just feel <laughs> bad for Madison and like Team Addison. So it's like a slay and a nay. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Okay, New Balance. Um, Slay. I think Slay too. Yeah. The 550s are cute. I just got a pair the other day. I kind of mm-hmm. like them. Except they're not as comfortable as I thought they would be. Really? I mean, they're like comfy, but I'm like, I have comfier sneakers. I will say people acted like they like did the same as like shape ups. Oh, yeah. People like are like, they're insane. I was like, yeah. okay, relax. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, yeah, they're not that different from like, my other yeah. sneakers. Okay. Um, Instagram reels. Nay. I'm going to say nay too, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, memes. I think memes will always be a slay. Depends depends on the meme. Depends on like how mm-hmm. funny it is and like what the current vibes are. But mm-hmm. they're they're pretty good. Yeah, I just said on one of my in and out lists that they're out. But I feel like people are just forgetting about them. It's not that I don't like, or like it. Certain ones are out. I think certain True. things are so overplayed to the point where it's not funny anymore. But like again, being someone who like came from like Tumblr culture, uh-huh. I'm like there are always really funny memes. We need to bring back like memes. Yeah. I feel like we're not using them as much. Like Go Piss Girl was, yeah. I'm sorry, that was the funniest era of like the entire pandemic the on Pikachu Twitter. One. Yeah, oh yeah. my God, they uh, were so good. So good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lip filler. <laughs> it's, it's like a to each their own thing, but nay for me. I think nay. Going yeah. on that same topic, BBLs. Nay. Nay. I People think. look crazy. I know. It doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look uh, good. And I, I also, though, I do just kind of worry about like the long-term effects of this. Because I'm like, everyone's been getting BBLs for like the past, what, three or four years. What are you going to look like in 10 years? Also, it's I feel like no one who is like at the age of like 80 had a BBL. So we don't no, know how it's going to look or no be. No idea. No idea. It's, yeah, that is scary. Yeah, it's a big nay for me. I'm like, just do some squats. Although I do feel stupid going to the gym when everyone's getting a BBL in like Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> or um, they go to Mexico. Yeah. And, and I feel stupid at the gym, like watching everyone be like, oh my God, I just, what? I just woke up with this ass. Like, I don't even know what happened. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm, I feel like I'm like pro, like do whatever you want. I kind of am too, but I think it, we're nay. reaching a point also where when everyone's lying about their plastic surgery. It's so beyond weird it's to me. so weird. Uh-huh. I'm like, just be yourself. If uh-huh. you're going to get work done, tell people you got work done. But also like, you don't need to do that. And I think there's a point where you're transforming your entire body. It's like, I don't know. I I don't love that, I guess. And also just like, I feel like the adoption and like fetishization, fetish, fetishization <laughs> of like black and POC features on mainly white women. Yeah. That's kind of where it also gets me because I'm like, why do you want to look like this? Do you True. want what, like a giant ass so you can like, go to the club on the weekend in like a really tight out. Like, what is the point? Whereas, you know, sometimes when people get worked out on their face and so I'm like, you see your face every single day. And I think that's very important. Like if you want a nose job, if you want lip filler, if you want Mm -hmm. whatever, BBLs are, we're taking it too far. That is very (laughs) true. Yeah. It is. It's just a little, it's so unnatural. Yeah. 
I think so I think unnatural. That's, I think that's what it is for and me. And then it looks it looks bad on the body because it's so unnatural. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I mean, not me being like be your natural <laughs> self, but like actually, like I am like pro, like do whatever you want. But I can, event, I can face, also understand yeah. being like super uncomfortable with your body. Like I think obviously as women, we've all had body dysmorphia yeah. at one point or another. So I'm like, I do like get maybe where it comes from, but I'm like, uh. it's going too far. Yeah, Ooh, so. that's a really interesting take. Yeah. I I, I agree. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm full of opinion. <laughs> yeah, Taylor Swift. Um. I'm like not a Taylor Swift fan. Really? I'm not a Swifty. Here's the thing though. I did like um, Folklore and I like Evermore. And like I like. That's kind of a Portland vibe. Yeah. I like her music. I'm just like I feel like some people's like entire mood is based on like if Taylor Swift is like releasing a song or not. And I I, like couldn't be fucked to keep up. Like I don't know. So like Slay I guess. Like she's good. I think I'm going to say Slay just because the the power and control she has over her fan base is truly remarkable uh, and impressive she to me. Could be the president. Yeah, she could be. Yeah, and you know what? I would vote for her. And <laughs> and also the shit that she's like taken that's happened to her past and made it in like light or yes. lemons into lemonade is like so like well, funny. That's, like, that's, petty, that's like an artist's dream. How petty is she like, is is hilarious. Yes, to, like to make stuff out of like your bad situations and make it art and make millions of dollars. Yes. Like, that's everybody's so dream. true. And she's done it. Uh-huh. So and I yeah. feel like uh, so many times she's been ridiculed, especially being a female and like taking over the like. Uh, artist space like, yeah she's like pissed a lot of males off and i think it's funny oh i love it yeah so slay um holding hands slay i think slay too so slay we need to hold more hands yeah we yeah. do and then dating apps uh, like nay for me right now mm-hmm. I'm, I'm off them i think the only one i'm gonna say slay to is currently believe it or not underrated bumble really yeah i feel like i haven't i haven't used bumble tinder any of those since i moved to la I was on Raya for a really long time. Me too. And I will say, like, I got on Bumble randomly the other day. And it was insane the amount of, like, quality guys that were on really? it. Really? Yeah. I was so impressed. I That's swear, shocking to hear. In my, in my head, currently, Hinge is overrated. Bumble is underrated. Yeah, I'm sick of Hinge. Hinge, what the heck is this rose thing? And the only good candidates are on there. And I don't want to be embarrassing and give them no, a rose. No, exactly. And then I look at my, like, likes. It's like, you have 750 unread, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to respond to any, not a single it's, one not, of these yeah. men. It's like, I feel like the caliber of men is bad. It's, it's bleak. Now, yeah. uh, trust me, Bumble is underrated. Okay. I s- also think because I haven't been on it in so long, which it sounds like you haven't, they like show you good ones uh, because you come back, you know? Okay. And I'm Maybe not- I'll investigate Bumble. You know what else I love is like, since I have to be the one that says something, which currently, believe it or not, I've just been saying slay and they <laughs> all respond. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I literally like, tell you, okay, girl. No, it's crazy. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> no, literally, I'm not kidding you. The, literally, all I do is say slay, and this guy immediately goes, well, and it's not loading. <laughs> he goes, I can only do that with you. Like, wait, the, that's that's a pickup line. Then I said slay. He goes, what's that gorgeous? <laughs> I said slay. He goes, like, when they respond, it's hilarious. They just, like, say. That's actually really funny. That's a good opening line. They'll be like, LOL, like, want to get a cocktail? What slay you? Like, they're like, what's up? I I feel like they just slay. Wait, this is funny. Someone goes, do you want to slay me? (laughs) Oh, my God. Wait, are you, like, going on dates? Yes. Like, it's crazy. With the slay boys? You have to say slay. No, slay boys. Okay. Love that. You have to say slay. (laughs) They'll be like weird. Another girl just said that to me. (laughs) It's crazy the amount of responses I'm getting. I think too, it's fun to see like who knows like pop culture currently. Yes. Yes. That's the other thing. I feel like so many like boomer behavior people our age. And I'm like, I'm sorry, have you never logged on to a website? (laughs) Like (laughs) like, what's happening? So there's things with this thing called the internet. Yeah. No, I meet people like that like frequently and I'll be like, oh my God, what universe are you living in? It's but like I can't talk normal. It's kind them. of refreshing, but yeah, like they don't understand no, anything I'm saying. No, and I'm, I'm literally saying. on a date with a normal person and I'm like, 
Yeah. Oh, and they don't get it. And I'm like, obviously the Debbie Ryan. I'm doing the Debbie Ryan. And then they're like, why is she doing that weird thing with yeah. tucking her hair behind her Yeah, ear? no, they wouldn't understand. Anyway, Nezrin, it has been such an absolute blast having you on. Thank you for spilling your wisdom and knowledge and this tea. This is so fun. Thank you for having um, me. Um, What can everyone, or like, where can everyone follow you? I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Black Prince, mm -hmm. B-L-A-C-K-P-R-I-N-T-S. And if you want to see my like photography, like a website, like my portfolio, it's nezrinjanan.com. Mm -hmm. And my TikTok is Cinemoney Honey. <laughs> and you have the best that's usernames. Where we'll leave it. Oh my god, thank you. Okay, so Black anyway. Prince and Cinemoney Honey. Yep. That's so those are so good. Love it. And um yeah, be sure to comment down below your favorite slay of the week. <laughs> and we will talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bye. Make someone's day. <laughs>